In this video, I'd like to talk about converting between recursive and explicit forms of geometric sequences. So let's start by first reminding ourselves what the general forms of both these recursive and explicit formulas are. So let's talk about recursive first, since that's what we're actually given in our problem. And for a recursive formula, we're always given the first term. So g of one, that's just our first term. And then we're given the pattern. So to find the nth term in the sequence, we're gonna look at the term before that, which is denoted as g of n minus one. And then we're gonna multiply by r, where r in both of our formulas is going to be the common ratio. That's the number in a geometric sequence that we multiply by to go from one term to the next. So this is our recursive formula in its most general form. And we can also consider the explicit formula in its most general form. So for this formula, if we have g of n, this will be equal to the first term, g of one, multiplied by that common ratio raised to the n minus one power. And the recursive formula is good for generating the entire sequence since it gives the pattern. The explicit formula is useful when we want to find a specific term in the sequence without having to regenerate the entire sequence. So if we want to find like the 20th term in our sequence, we can just plug in n equals 20 to this formula. And so with these problems, there are two different approaches. One is that you could just generate the sequence from the formula that you're given and then notice the patterns and from there come up with your formula that you're looking for. Or we could just figure out the first term and the common ratio by looking at the structure of our general formula and then just plug in those numbers to our other formula. So we know the first term is 2.2 and we know we're needing to find an explicit formula. So we already have this one right here. This is just 2.2. And looking at our general recursive formula, you can see that to find the nth term, you take the term before it and multiply by our common ratio. So this negative five here, this is our common ratio, our R value. So with that in mind, we can just plug these into our formula. So we have that g of n is equal to 2.2, then multiplied by five raised to the n minus one power. And actually this should be negative five since our common ratio in this case is a negative number. Now we don't wanna just assume that this explicit formula is correct. We wanna be able to check our work here. So let me make just a bit of space. And to check this, there's a couple ways to do it. We could just regenerate the entire sequence and then pick a specific term and plug that into our formula and make sure we get that value in our sequence. Or we can just maybe generate the second term from our explicit, our recursive formula and then compare that to the second term in our new formula and make sure they're the same thing. So let's use the second method since that's a little bit faster. We're gonna use our recursive formula to generate the second term. So g of two using this recursive formula. Well, we're plugging in n equals two. So we have g of two minus one, which is just g of one, our first term, multiplied by negative five. And our first term is 2.2. And 2.2 multiplied by negative five would be negative 11. So if our explicit formula is correct, then when we plug in two here, we will also get negative 11. So this is 2.2, now multiplied by this negative five raised to the two minus one power. So this is equal to 2.2, multiplied by minus five to the first power, which is just negative five. And of course, 2.2 times negative five is negative 11. So we got the same second term in both of our sequences. And if you really want, you can go to the third term in each just to make certain that it's correct. But this is enough that we can feel confident that our explicit formula here that we generated is correct. So let's do another problem where we're gonna look at the reverse scenario. 
where now we're given the explicit formula and we need to find the recursive formula. And we know the general form of our explicit formula is that it's equal to the first term multiplied by the common ratio raised to the n minus one power. So from this, we can see what the first term is. That's five. And of course, you can check this by just plugging in one here, since you get minus two to the zero power, which is just one. And we also know the common ratio, since that is whatever we're raising to the n minus one power. This is our r value here. So r in this case is negative two. And we know for our general recursive formula that this term right here, f of one, that's our first term. And we found that to be five. And we know that in the pattern to find the nth term, we take the term before it and multiply it by our common ratio, which we call r. So this number here in the box that we're looking for, that's our common ratio. So we found that that's negative two. So we can put minus two into the box here. And at this point, we just wanna check our work. So for this one, let's again, just generate the second term for each of these formulas and just make sure they're the same thing. So in our explicit formula, when we plug in n equals two, we get our first term, which is five, multiplied by negative two, our common ratio raised to the two minus one power. So that's just to the first power, so you get minus two multiplied by five, and that's gonna be negative 10. So now we wanna take our recursive formula and generate our second term here. So in this case, we have f of two, so n equals two. So that'll be equal to f of two minus one, which is just f of one, multiplied by this common ratio, negative two. And of course, our first term we know is five. So we get five times minus two, which again is just negative 10. So we got what we expected. In both of our formulas, we were able to generate that the second term is negative 10. And like I mentioned above in the last problem, you can go to the third term if you really wanna feel certain about this. But this should be enough, which means we can feel confident that what we put in the boxes here, that these are the correct answers. And in the next video, we're gonna look at one more example problem that's a little bit challenging since it doesn't match up to either of our general formulas.